Stephen B. Luce was 57 years old when he became the first president of the Naval War College on October 6, 1884. Luce was promoted to Rear Admiral in 1885. He was president of the Naval War College between 1884 and 1886, at which time he would have been wearing this uniform. This uniform is a deep blue wool. It kind of has a black appearance right now, but you can see next to my black clothing that it is indeed a deep blue. Um, this would have, what it, would have been what you would call Union blue in the time of the Civil War. This uniform would have been called a service dress blue, and it was used between 1877 and 1898. Uh, we actually know that this uniform is specifically it was specifically made in 1884 because it's signed at the collar. Uh, so Luce actually signed this uniform at the back uh, collar. Um, it's his signature, Stephen B. Luce, and then it says July 1884. So we know this uniform was made in 1884. We actually know the manufacturer of the uniform in New York. So we know this uniform was created in 1884. It was actually modified the next year when Luce was promoted from Commodore to Rear Admiral. Uh, Commodore would have had uh, two stars, silver stars actually, these have kind of faded and tarnished to a blue color almost, but they would have been silver stars at the time. Um, he would have only had the two stars and when he was promoted, he would have had the anchor placed between the two stars. So it would have been star, anchor, star. And we actually have a photograph of Luce in this uniform with that configuration of the insignia on his collar. It has since been changed for whatever reason. Uh, that could have been because when he retired in 1889, he couldn't have the anchor on his collar anymore if he wanted to keep wearing the uniform. Um, it could have been for um, veteran reasons or parade reasons. I'm not really sure, but we do know that this anchor was removed and has been since tacked back on. You can see some blue stitching here and here that's just barely holding each side of the anchor on both sides on. If this was the original configuration, again, it would be between these two stars. Now, the thread holding these two stars down does seem very old. It's that kind of faded brown thread that happens. It would have been blue or black originally, but has since faded to brown from 150 years ago. Um, so we do know that that thread is pretty old to the time period that he would have been wearing this uniform or soon thereafter in the coming decades. Uh, so this isn't a modern change. This has not happened recently. The anchor was stitched back on recently, but the stars have been stitched there since the early, late 1800s, early 1900s. So that's a fun fact. So these insignia are actually created with the tiniest little metal spiral coils. You can kind of see that this thread here is hanging loose. What would have happened is you would have had this design all gridded out and ready to go, and you would cut the coils to a specific size as they gradiate going uh, larger in the um, triangle of the star on each section. And then you would thread each coil and stitch it down in the section, stitch them, go to the next section, come up, put a coil on for the next size, stitch it down, go up, put a coil on for the next size. And that's how you sort of step laddered up to create this design for each of these insignia. And each is different. Obviously the anchor is at different angles and would be different sizes. Um, but that's what those little coils, and that's why we have this little thread loose in this little area where it's missing some of the metal. You can actually see underneath where the cardboard is reinforcing the shape of the star for someone to stitch over. And underneath everything is the base wool fabric, the blue wool fabric, which was used um, to create the star, and then you would stitch that on, as opposed to just stitching a star onto the lapel. Because we can see, as you change rank, the order of your insignia also changes. So it's very important to have a base that the insignia can be stitched to, and then you can stitch that on wherever it's supposed to go, whether it's on a uh, sleeve or whether it's on a collar. Um, the stars are all the same, anchors are all the same. This uniform has um, wool braid going around the outside edge, and it actually goes to two, 
goes around two side vents on each side of the uniform here. So you can see that lovely vent right there. The vent is a relief for the uniform. So as you sit down, if you have a long uniform, as you sit down, it doesn't just bunch up while you're sitting. It gives a little bit of flare so that the uniform stays flat, doesn't get wrinkled while you're sitting at a desk or doing whatever you have to do throughout the day. And you still look military fit and ready to go. The braid goes around the side and up the two back princess seams. Uh, you'll notice around the whole outside, we also have this really beautiful soutache trim, which is stitched into these lovely coils around the outside of the wool braid. This is probably a silk soutache trim because they haven't invented any kind of synthetic fibers at the time yet. Coming back around to the side, on his cuffs, we have this very thick gold trim. This is actually a, a material that is woven and includes actual metal in the trim and what is probably actually gold for a person of his status. You can see it still has some of the gleam to it in the light. And the trim is actually pretty stiff in my hands because at some point this was flattened in a box or uh, just in his own uh, closet or something like that after, after disuse. And um, it doesn't want to stay or pop out into a, a, a curved shape of, a, of an arm. It wants to stay flat. And it's very heavy. I don't know how to, to relate this to you without you actually touching it yourself, but it's very heavy uh, trim. And that just goes to the weight of the uniform. Um, these two bands are the size of Rear Admiral. We have the one star that also uh, uh, indicates a Rear Admiral. The lining for the uniform is one fabric on the inside and a different fabric on the sleeve. You can see we have this lovely cream silk or um, silk wool blend that's on the inside of the sleeve. And that would have been for comfort reasons so that you are uh, able to change out the sleeve lining if you need to. And also um, you have more comfort for the cuff chafing on your arm so the inside of the uniform had a little surprise for me. When I usually see these military uniforms, they usually have one interior pocket. Um, this uniform actually has two interior pockets. These welt pockets that are on the inside of his uniform would have been something that was used for important things that he needed to carry with him throughout the day. He wasn't relying on an assistant or a secretary. He wanted to make sure he had those documents, those items with him at all times. And that just speaks to the person he was. He was president of the Naval War College. He was a very important person. But he was still making sure that everything was tidy, everything was in order, he had everything he needed, and he made sure he had enough pockets to carry those things that he needed. So you can see here one of the two welt pockets on the inside. It has um, welts from the lining. And they're actually pretty deep pockets. They go about this deep. And they are on both sides as you can see there with a the beautiful facing going down. We have a tag at the bottom of the uniform here. This is to help us identify the uniform. So if this were to get separated from this tag, we would always have one stitched onto it that we would know that this is the uniform. This is very lightly tacked in a few places and not anything that's going to damage the uniform at all. Now, as I opened up that uniform, you can see where the buttons are going down the front but you can't see where the buttonholes are on the other side. And that's because there's a placket that hides those buttonholes from view. It's a very clever way of having a, a very military uniform without worrying about what color buttons were on top. And when it was closed, you would only see the two edges of the wool braid going down the front. So this has been a look at Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce's uniform. Hopefully this helped bring a little bit of the museum to life for you. We appreciate you watching. Have a great day.